to be able to watch back on demand. Um, so thank you so much for joining um, us today for today's Asia application live talk um, on the kind of performing arts audition process. Um, we have representatives from dance, theatre, arts and music um, who will be providing you with lots of information to help you with any upcoming auditions you may have. Um, so from dance, we've got April and Brandon. From music, we've got um, Fiorenzo, Ruben and Jack. And from theatre arts, we've got Rob and Ryan. There are a few housekeeping rules that we just want to kind of go over. Um, we can't hear or see you um, because we are in the webinar format. So if you do have a question, uh, please pop it in the Q&A box, um, which will be on the bottom of your screen. If you're watching us from a laptop or a desktop computer, if you're watching on your phone, the Q&A button will be on the left hand corner um, but we'll be checking Q&A uh, throughout the presentation and we do have time at the end for um, any questions that you may have. So I'm going to hand over um, and let you all begin. Great, thank you so much and welcome everybody. Um, so we're going to talk in two parts today and then at the end there'll be a chance for you to ask any questions as well. Um, we're going to begin with hearing from some of our current students and also some graduate stories. They're going to share with you their experience of studying on our respective programmes in music, dance and theatre arts and then also maybe give you some tips about application and how they found the application process. Um, we'll then move into hearing from tutors from the disciplines and we're going to talk a little bit about what to expect if you were to study with us and then we can share more insights about the application process from an admissions perspective as well um but we just really encourage you to ask questions throughout we're going to keep speaking um but we'd really like to engage with you so please ask questions if we say things and you want to hear more um then do use the the chat function the q a function and we'll we'll answer throughout so i'm going to hand over to Ruben. Hello everybody, uh, my name's Ruben Bernard. I'm the Graduate Academic Assistant for Music at Middlesex. Um, I'm a graduate from the Jazz Programme. Uh, so I graduated about three and a half years ago. So I came to, came to Middlesex uh, six, six and a half years ago. Um, I'm, I'm a uh, jazz pianist, keyboardist, bassist, uh, composer, you name it. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been you know, but following my graduation, I've just taken on a role here helping around the department with uh, mostly with events and things like that. So the way I got to Middlesex um, was kind of kind of long winded. I, I didn't even uh, know it existed until um, until about eight months before I came here. I, uh, I took a gap year having finished up with college and um, I had a place reserved at Newcastle to study music and um, my piano teacher at the time told me if you want to become a live musician in, and you're in this country get to one of the big music cities namely London they, they just said do whatever you can get to London and so I looked around a few universities came up with a short list and I, this friend of mine had just finished um, studying jazz at Middlesex himself and he told me it was the best place to go to to study jazz just because um, with the experience that I had playing jazz, which had only been about a year, I, you know, I'd been playing piano a lot longer, but he, he said that the, the staff there were so supportive and that I would get really good one-to-one -one teaching from some of the best piano players in the country. And so I, I, did, um, yeah, I did my application for that, had an audition that was the easiest thing ever. It ended up being more of a, more of a friendly talk than anything. Um, the, the person who interviewed me ended up being um, one, one of my lecture, lecturers um, the next year when I, when I signed up. Um, but I, I just found it a, a really easy process. I you know, had, had a campus tour on the same day as, uh, as my audition and was just completely blown away by everything here, just all of the facilities, how friendly the environment was. Um, so yeah, I, uh, ended, it ended up being the precursor to what was three very happy years of studying for me. I'm going to hand over to my friend Jack because I think I've done enough talking. Take it away, Jack. Cool. Hi. Um, yeah. So I joined um, Middlesex. Th uh, well, this is actually my, my fourth uh, year of study here. Um, I did a year of the jazz course, but I've actually now kind of uh, stuck to being on the popular course. Um, and so I'm in my uh, 
third year of study here um, on that course. Uh, sorry, I just got caught out by Songbird of his generation. Thanks for that, Ruben. That, that really threw me there. Um, yeah. Uh, so I kind of uh, applied to Middlesex actually because my my uh, good friend, he um, happened to be going to an open day here and um, actually for the, the jazz course. And um, yeah, I, I literally just came along because he had no one to kind of go with. Um, I wasn't originally looking at going here. I was kind of looking at going to Southampton Solent somewhere kind of because uh, I wanted to be on kind of the coast and, and stuff like that. And, and I kind of really... Um, yeah, felt the atmosphere of Middlesex was somewhere that I could consider to be home. And thus I kind of uh, just applied, um, applied pretty early, um, kind of contacted one of the one of the course leaders about uh, kind of getting a coffee. Um, and yeah, just kind of talking a bit more about the course, um, which I, you know, I thoroughly kind of encourage you to, to do as well. Just reach out because people are lovely here. They will kind of answer any questions you have. Um, and yeah, then I just applied um kind of did a, a couple of songs um kind of over video just as a kind of audition and um yeah it was all it was all very straightforward and, and I was kind of helped through that process by um people from from Middlesex so yeah I thoroughly encourage you to go for it Hello, um, I'm Ryan. I'm on the th I'm third year on the Theatre Arts Design and Production Programme. Um, I had a weird journey to get to Middlesex because I went for a first year elsewhere at Edgehill University and it was probably be hands down one of the worst experiences of my life. Um, and me and a friend were kind of looking for somewhere else that we could explore both design and performance. Um, and it just so happened that the Theatre Arts Programme allowed you to do exactly that. We came down for an interview, Nicola, who um, is the, the leader of the programme, she, we were on like a name basis within seconds of meeting one another. And it's been like a genuinely incredible um, place to work and thrive um, because we work in like a very, in a professional way where we, we work as a theatre company throughout the, the years that we're here. And then this is, Recently, well, it, within the last six months, I got fed up with my hospitality job and I was like, do you know what, I'm going to completely go for it, jump in. And they helped me become a freelancer and what like I am now, um, where I've just literally on the 16th of January, which was a couple of days ago, um, I just finished a month, I think it was like a month long run, a very successful production of Five Guys Named Mo. Um, which was like, had no relation to the university whatsoever. It was just the way that they helped me into my like career, which I've just started, um, which I was the designer for. And we've got, I think it was like seven five-star reviews and four four-star reviews. And we've been a nom nominated for like five Opfy awards as well. Um, and also now freelancing as a stage manager for Cab Cabaret and Circus at Bunga Bunga and uh, Midnight Lounge, which unfortunately is just closed because of COVID. Um, and yeah, they've just been really helpful, um, have the course in, you know, shaping me into an artist and allowing me to go into a career while also studying at the same time, which has been really helpful rather than just leaving me to find my way after university, which I know a lot of courses do um, around the country, but yeah, theatre arts is incredible. Try to unmute. Okay, hi, I am Brandon Sutherland. I am on BA Dance Practices and I'm doing choreography. I'm in my third year. I'm really interested, obviously, in choreography. I do uh, filmmaking um, and I also teach as well. Um, so getting to Middlesex um, was actually quite easy. My dance teacher actually went to Middlesex and she'd been graduated for about five years and um, I was like dead set that I wanted to go to London. I applied for a few conservatoires as well. And then I applied for here and I auditioned for all of them. And the thing that stuck out for me was just all the experiences and like opportunities I would get because I first I applied as a performer and then later on I've switched to be a choreographer. And I just wasn't sure. I was like, I like, I love this. I love that. I just want to do a bit of everything. So. Uh, the first year and the second year are really good at like kind of 
giving you a bit of everything so you can just try everything out and really decide what you what you want to do so that was something that really stuck out for me because then I could really like you know try everything um so then I didn't have to decide in that moment because I feel like when you're applying for university and stuff it's it's very much you have to make this decision and uh, it's really big and scary so it was nice to kind of take that that weight off a little bit um that application was like really easy and I think you've just got to like like find your best bits and put it put it on paper like don't sell yourself less like don't downplay what you've done um and yeah and same with auditions like it's it was just really nice and chill and like I think people like to make it really dramatic especially with like a audition you want to feel like you're on the x factor and it's like very dramatic but I think it was they were really good at just treating it like a normal class. Like if you go to college and you train, it's just a normal class in a different location. Um, so yeah, you just got to be comfortable. And yeah, it was it was just a really like fun experience. Like you're going to a new place and you're like working with different people from loads of different backgrounds. Um, and it's really interesting. And yeah, like my three years here has just been really cool it's been really nice just to explore loads of different things i've made films i've taught classes i've made loads of pieces if you go to the next slide there's like photos from my pieces and um and yeah like just loads of different opportunities to perform and get my work seen and outside of uni as well they really help with pushing people and helping with other applications um, for different dance festivals and things like that, that I've been interested in. They've been really good at looking at my applications and going, okay, you need to put this across and send these videos and things. Um, and yeah, it's just been, it's great. I would definitely recommend, especially if you are, if you know you want to go into dance, but you're not sure what area, this is a great course that you can really explore all the different options before you make your decision and also it keeps you well-rounded as an artist as well to be able to say oh I did this I did this I did this um so yeah that's dance thank you so much all of you um I'm just going to encourage you to use the Q&A so we've heard from um students and graduates of music dance and theatre arts so please ask any questions about um the experiences you've heard them talk about or the application process um and maybe while you're thinking we'll watch a short film created by theatre arts that gives an insight into the student experience <laughs> I think we're having some technical issues. Oh. Okay.
we have got a question already. I don't know if anyone wants to kind of answer um, before we move on to the next slide um, or if we will answer it at the end. Um, but the question is, what is the audition process like for dance? Um, what do you find the most difficult? Yeah, great question. Um, so we're going to move into talking about theatre arts, music and dance, and we're going to speak a little bit about the um, audition experience in each. So I'm going to cover that in a moment. We've got a slide for dance. Does that feel OK? And then we'll have the information on the screen to help me answer as well. Um, and I think theatre art, Rob, you're going to talk a little bit about theatre arts to kick us off. Sure. Yeah. And I was just uh, searching for the uh, YouTube link for that video because I know it didn't quite run smoothly there and we can share that with you I'm sure but it's out out on YouTube and you can watch it uh, in your own time um, it just captures some of the spirit I think that Ryan's also spoken to um, about the kind of industriousness and playfulness uh, of, of, uh, of the theatre arts community and what you also see in that video is some of the spaces that and facilities that we have on offer and at your disposal. So we run two programs, uh, theatre performance and production. So you're likely to enter that if you're interested in acting and performance or BA um, honours theatre design and production, uh, which is the one that Ryan's on because he's interested in um, design. You can also, if you discover along the way that you're, you have a, a, a desire to direct, you might not even though you have that at the very beginning, but you might just discover that that's a, um, a, a desire of yours through the, the modules that you end up taking. You can decide halfway through in your second year, depending on the modules you, you take and you, you'll take them, um, you'll be directed as to which ones you take so that you can um, opt to come out of the degree with a, a, an exit award in directing and production. Um, our approach is very practice led just like the, the, the um, they are for, 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 for dance and music, I'm sure. But uh, 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 we, we position ourselves in, uh, within somewhere between a, a drama school and uh, a university, a uh, typical university that's perhaps more uh, driven by a theoretical approach. Um, so our, our philosophy is that you, we, as, as, we, as we do, we, we can't help but think. And as uh, um, thinking is a form of doing. So it's all arrived at um, through... Um, a practice set approach that, that typically falls like 75% of the assessment is practical, perhaps 25% is, is um, uh, more uh, written based. Um, but what's really special, I think, about theatre arts, I, I say this um, with all my bias, but um, I, I think it's having been to other universities and other programs, theatre programs, I think it's true to say that you, you, you gather your autonomy and you, you, you have the freedom to develop your own specialism and explore your skills. And we're really, uh, we, we want to hold your hands at the beginning, but let them go um, through, the, through the three years so that you can really feel like you can fly um, once you um, get out into the world um, and into the industry. So everything's industry focused. Um, a lot of those skills you'll develop because you collaborate both across the theatre performance and the theatre design um, programmes. So we're one community, we're not split designers and um, um, actors um, or performers. Um, you, you may, um, even if you direct work with designers or actors and performers, um, some people develop a specialism for writing. So we, we facilitate that, we have modules geared towards that playwriting and other forms of writing. Um, we also have a very strong solo performance strand so that you might develop that kind of work um, either as a performance artist, live artist uh, or um, a stand up comedian. That module in the third year is culminating in a couple of weeks time in um, a, a live gig in a pub in North London. And it's that kind of uh, um, uh, industry led real world embedded uh, practice that we're, we're, we're really geared towards and interested in. Um, and, 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 and that's uh, uh, typified by our final module um, called Theatre Festival, which is uh, an outward facing. This year it will be um, um, performed at Camden People's Theatre. And um, the idea is that students will create a piece of work that is, is able potentially to um, uh, have a life at 
somewhere like the Edinburgh Festival or Brighton Festival or wherever it is. So um, it's that kind of industry, wider industry focus that we're really gearing towards. That's the, uh, the kind of headline I want to give you here. Uh, um, and of course, any questions about the audition process, um, um, perhaps uh, you, you can ask in the in in the chat. But just to say that um, we, we have a mix of either on campus. We ran a, an audition uh, a couple of weeks ago. Nicholas Stammers, who Ryan mentioned, and myself um, had a great time with students who, by the end of it, were just grinning because they 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 they, they didn't realise it was an audition. In fact, it wasn't an audition. It was just a working three hour working session, and they were they had such such fun, and we had fun. It was about collaboration. And, and drawing on that kind of spirit, giving um, uh, students a taste of what it's like to work with us and the way we work. Um, so on that basis, um, I would um, not get too scared by this word audition. Um, if you can't get to us for an audition, um, you can send um, what's billed as a showcase, but again, another scary word showcase, and not quite accurate, really. Um, I, I would prefer to call it self tape because we ask you to kind of um, submit a, a two minute uh, tape video of you performing um, a, a, a piece, a, a, a scene a, from a, something you know well, something you've embodied and learned and understood and shows off your strengths. Um, any questions about that side of things? Um, obviously, as I say, we can answer them, but um, that's all from me for now. Great. I think that's that's my <laughs> that's my call. Hi everyone. I'm Fiorenzo and I'm a senior lecturer in music here at Middlesex University. I'm sorry I joined the call slightly later than everyone else. I was teaching, so so lovely to have come back to teaching on campus. So I just spent um, a couple of hours with the second year students, which was really, really amazing and uh, really, really glad to be here and to be talking to you about the music program and the music business and arts management that we're running here at Middlesex University. So, of course, as you can see on the slide, you know, there's there's a bit about um, some of the features that we um, have for these courses, the facilities. We have a wonderful new recording studio. Um, we have uh, lots of practice rooms um, and then, of course, the diversity in the teaching that we are able to uh, give you, which uh, range from performance, composition, some writing, production, you know, you, you name it. I think we probably have it. And, um, and then, of course, the different opportunities that we offer our students and being based in London, I think we're in, a, in the really um, privileged position to be able to access some of the most prestigious music venues. And I know that for a while, live music hasn't been a thing, but hopefully uh, we're slowly returning uh, to it. And um, London has a lot to offer and we're very keen to set these things up for our, our students. So um, I want to talk especially about the application process and I've got Ruben as well, who's here, who's um, able to provide us with his experience of the application process as a former applicant, as a former student, and now, uh, you know, has joined our family here at Middlesex University, which is great. But one thing that I wanted to say, and pick, picking up from some of the things that have been said before, and in a way, it's great that we have this opportunity to talk about the application process in this context, looking at other disciplines, because um, there's a shared ethos here at Middlesex University that um, the application is not necessarily an audition. I really liked what Brendan sa said that, you know, the, it may feel like an X Factor style type of thing. And that makes for great television, great entertainment, but it's not really our ethos, which is really to work with students. When you come to Middlesex, we want to support you in developing as an artist, whether you're a musician, a songwriter, a composer, uh, an actor, a director, a dancer, whoever you are. So it's not us testing you. It's when, when we meet and when we read the application is really us trying to understand how can we support you? How can we help you 
to achieve the goal that you have, your career goals, your professional goals, your artistic goals. So I really loved what um, Rob has said that, you know, we need to think about uh, a proper word for what it is that we're doing. And I don't think we have found it yet because all the words that we're using are somehow inadequate, right? Because our ethos is really to have you as the students at the center of our teaching. So it's really all about you. Um, so maybe we should, I, I should give, um, I should pass it on to Ruben who can um, tell us about his own experience. Um, and then I can say more, of course, about the process of applying for, for music. And if there are any specific questions, it'd be lovely to kind of interact in that way. But Ruben, would you like to come in and tell us a little bit about your experience? It'd be lovely to hear. Hi, Fiorenza. I've already run through the experience I had coming into the course. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry, I didn't know that. Sorry, I, I came in later. Sorry, I came in when Brandon was talking, so I didn't know you already done that. Okay, so I will say um, a few things more that I thought was, was really um, important and will reflect on the application process, is that when you read BA music, it's a very broad term, right? And music can be so many different things. So I'm sure uh, Ruben has mentioned that he was primarily a jazz musician, but we also have different strands and different paths within music. So your interest may be jazz, it may be classical, classical music composition, it could be popular music, uh, pop songwriting, you could be a performer, you could be a producer, and there's so many different ways in which we can understand music and we are very conscious of it and we have different strands within the general umbrella which is BA music and in the same way as Rob was saying a lot of our students come in and develop a better understanding of what they want to be maybe you want to focus more on your songwriting or you want to develop your producing skills we offer flexibility within the broader term, the broader uh, program of BA Music for you to pursue this much more specific, um, I guess, exit awards. We do have um, some, uh, some labels like performance and composition, popular music, production, um, jazz, etc. So um, when you write your application, you might not necessarily be sure as to where exactly you would like to take your work or your career. And that's okay because we want to help you do that. So really what we are looking for in the application is, I think what Brandon was saying, just what you're interested right now, what you've been doing and where would you like to go? And that could change. And that's absolutely okay because we, we provide for that. We, we are perfectly conscious that that could happen within your course. And in, some, in many ways, we hope it does. We hope that your studies here will be transformative. Um, for what concerns music business and arts management, um, there are lots of overlaps between BA music and music business. And that's another strength that we have here at Middlesex because so much depends on the business of music when you are a musician, a performer, a composer. And what's great is that we have expertise in both aspects and you can really um, add to your tools and your arsenal, um, knowing about the business, knowing about uh, you know, the artistic side and hopefully combining the two in different ways. Um, I think that was really what I wanted to say. So thank you very much. And I'm gonna pass it on to April. Thank you. So I think there's the wonderful thing about doing it as a trio in terms of theatre arts, <laughs> dance and music is there is so much similarities and I really liked um, it, the idea that Ferenzo was saying about this ethos of Middlesex of working with students and I think Brandon you're going to be quoted now for the rest of the admission cycle that that X Factor style um, you know feeling like you're really put on the spot and uncomfortable it's just not the it's just not the path and the approach that we take um, we love working with our students we are really passionate about the discipline and I think I can say this on behalf of all three disciplines is that we really enjoy seeing students thrive, discover their potential, and we're really excited about fostering individuality within students and 
I think our programmes and the graduate pathways that our students go on to do are really diverse um, and they're very entrepreneurial in what they go on to do. And that is very much a reflection of the ethos of the programme that we're here to support you in discovering new things, um, opening your eyes to possibilities of the practices that you're interested in and also introduce you to things that perhaps you never know, knew existed um, and discover your potential um, as well. So in dance, we have two entry points similarly to music and theatre art. So we have um, the BA Dance Performance Pathway and BA Dance Practices. And as Brandon said, quite often it's quite common that students, the majority of our students join us on performance because that's uh, where they are on arrival. And then we have this shared community. So everybody has the same opportunities available to them for the first two years of study. Um, and then it's the end of year two when students can make a choice as to where they would like to specialise um, and they can self-select from a portfolio of modules in their final year and really curate um, a pathway that suits them. So we have Exit Awards in Dance Science, in Choreography, um, the Practices route, which is a bit more versatile, where you can build um, between different practices like teaching, um, performance, choreography, and you can kind of mix and match. And then we have the straight performance pathway as well. Um, I think something to say for dance is that um, we too very much straddle the boundary like theatre arts were saying between vocational level study and a university experience. Uh, we have really excellent facilities. Uh, we have five fully equipped dance studios uh, with all the things you would expect, sprung floors and bars and mirrors. Um, and they're spread out across the campus as well. Um, we also have a team of um, tutors who are industry professionals. They're working in the industry and they bring that expertise into working with you. Um, and then we have a, a really diverse uh, technique provision, which is something that is really sits at the forefront of um, the degree programs. So it's also something that I think is quite unusual, unusual for a university program to have such rigorous technique in place. Um, so a common question is what, what dance techniques will you study? Um, so we teach ballet, improvisation, release technique, um, Humphrey, Cunningham, Graham techniques, you also engage in an urban program um, of locking house, Afro house, crump breaking and street jazz. And this is all supplemented um, with wellness, mental health, well-being, fitness for dance. Um, we also have choreographic projects and you're kind of developing your own um, making processes where you're working with screen dance, other students across the university as well. There's lots of collaborative opportunities um, with students in music and theatre arts and set design, um, interior architecture, animation, robotics has happened, which was quite, um, quite exciting and fun. Um, so across the programme, you're dancing a lot, you're in pretty much every day, um, and then the afternoons normally take on more of a project approach where you're engaging either in a collaborative project, or you might be working on one of the dance science modules, dancing histories, maybe you're learning about how to write or critique um, work, um, or it might be that you have your own rehearsals for the pieces that you're making as well. Okay, so every day is quite different, um, but it's quite intense and we're very much trying to give you lots of opportunities so you can discover yourself and then um, go on to things that um, are successful for a lifelong career um, in dance rather than something that's just quite specialised. Um, something then else to add would be about the application process and I'll just respond to Daisy's question. Um, so you will apply to us via UCAS. Uh, we really enjoy reading all of your um, UCAS forms but it's really important that we also get to meet you and we see you move and we also hear about um, what your interests are and get a chance to hear you articulate yourself as well. So you'll be um, invited to join us on the university campus and you'll have a day with us here um, as part of that you'll have quite an in-depth um, talk so you'll get to a chance to hear about all of the modules and all the things that are on offer to you you'll get a chance to see all of the, all of the facilities and see some of our students in those classes as well and then you'll have an afternoon workshop with a couple of our dance tutors and you'll learn two um, different dance technique styles and then we'll have a chance to have a conversation at the end. So as Brandon said, it's very, it's very friendly, very welcoming. It's just as much a chance for us to see you as it is for you to see us. It's a big, 
big stage in your journey at the moment you've got some um, exciting choices to make and I'd really encourage you if you can to go and see the places whether it's for a virtual open day or at your audition days so that you get a sense of what what suits you and um, your interests and, and where you want to be. Um, I don't know if Brandon, if you wanted to add anything, because I think Daisy was asking if um, there was anything that was particularly difficult or challenging, or if you have any advice maybe to calm nerves um, for anyone maybe that's thinking of applying and that probably goes for Jack and Ryan as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it was just very like, I think out of all the auditions that I had, mostly I auditioned for conservatoires and they were very like, it was very on the spot. They were looking for certain things. And and this um this one it was more more of like a like you come here to learn and to grow. They're not looking for like, you know, the best dancer in the world. They're looking that you're um open to critique and open to learning and open to like grow. So I think that for me, that was difficult to get my head around because where I'd been to, I was like, oh my God, I need to be like the best dancer ever. Let me like go to the gym like 12 times a week before my audition. Whereas actually like they're looking for, you know, this is the, you're almost like you go in at one level and you come out at another level and there's that development you have over the three years. So don't kind of don't expect yourself to be like the best because in reality, like, you're not going to be you might be the best when you leave but you've got to go in at a point so um just being open and being like self-aware of like you know this is what I can do I'm just going to show the best of myself and not try to overdo overdo it and show off because it's in in reality that's not you know you're not applying you're not auditioning for a West End job you're applying for more training to hopefully get you to where you want to be so um yeah, I think that's always something that like to remember and to think about. Uh, yeah. Nice, thank you, Jack and Ryan. Do you want to add anything? Any tips to settle any nerves in terms of ahead of um, putting an application in? Yeah, I just say like the the audition process that we have for theatre arts um from what i remember it was it was it was just like a really genuinely relaxed day where you, you get to learn about what facilities we have and what we have to offer which are probably better than a lot of other universities have to offer that i've seen um and it, it's just a chance for you guys to see how we work as well um in theatre arts uh whether that be design or performance um because that's what I think the audition process for us is trying to show you is like how, you know, we also want to see how you work, but also the way that we work, because the way that the audition is run is exactly the way that you'll be training across the three years to become these, you know, self-efficient practitioners that we're being trained to be, which is, is really good, yeah. might just come in there while we're on the topic of theatre if that's okay and just just say concretely what we do is you know say that it, uh, say that the, the for theatre arts it's, it's typically three hours it's not the whole day um uh, applicants would maybe arrive at 10 o'clock be met by a student and a member of staff and then at 10 30 we might take you on a tour and show you around our facilities 11 o'clock um you'd meet those um members of staff who are um auditioning you and um, uh, we would um, introduce you to our course, have a chat, um, quite informal, um, in the group, and then we would take a scene from a play and give that to you and you would collaborate and look at that and we'd discuss your ideas and your responses um, very openly um, and very freely. Um, and then you would make a piece of theatre around that and we would um, hopefully have a designer in the room too with an applicant and they would liaise um they would liaise with costume and design we'd get lights in we have costume in we have box of props in and you have utter license as a group to make a piece of theater that you show and share 
um, to others by the end of the morning. It could be in the afternoon. It could be, on, you know, we, we vary the times, but that's pretty much how the kind of uh, thing runs, just so that you have a clear idea of that. Jack, did you want to add anything before we go to the next film? Uh, I don't think Jack is on the call. Yeah, I, I believe Jack's had to shoot off early, but I can speak for the music auditions. Lovely, thank you. And then I can add to... Yeah, absolutely. So what, what I found was, um, I think a lot of people come to auditions um, for these sorts of sorts of degrees at university feeling this um, sort of impending pressure that, that you have to get an offer. You have to get an offer somewhere. There's, there's always that that background pressure because you know ev everybody everybody who goes through this process thinks of the possibility of not getting anywhere and then what do you what do you do but i felt like when i came here for for my audition i felt like that that sense of need almost um was put across like as mutual it was like the department wanted um sort of wanted me to come just to they wanted me to come there just as much as i wanted to be there so it, it kind of made it um like a mutual experience. It was, it was more that um, uh, sort of, I, yeah, I, ju I just felt like the half of the day that I spent at my audition was, uh, was the university sort of welcoming me in instead of uh, me sort of having to prove to them that I belonged um, somehow on, on one of their courses. So I, I found that, that really supportive um, and it just, it just made, made the whole thing so much easier. And it's, a, it's something I've noticed helping with auditions throughout the years um, working here as well. Yeah, thank you, Ruben. And actually, just to very briefly, sorry, April, just to add to that is, um, uh, you know, adding on what Ruben was saying uh, about we wanting students and maybe linking to what Brandon was saying, this is not an audition for a role in that we're not looking for one student, right? We don't have one particular identity or age or gender or whatever we don't have one vision for our students we welcome diversity we're a very inclusive university so you know we we welcome students uh, from all kinds of backgrounds uh, with all sorts of different practices and so you know we're very open to to students and what they can offer uh, us in the same way that we want students to know what we can offer them so I think it's normal to be anxious. I don't think there's any way that one cannot be in this situation, but just know that we're also anxious, you know, it's, it's on both sides, you know, so hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll um, manage to go beyond that and get to know each other during the audition process, because I think that's really the important thing. Um, as, as Ryan was saying, it's a two way things so that, you know, we, we want to know who you are and you want to know who we are and so hopefully we'll we'll manage to get that across i don't know whether you've mentioned but you know we do ask for some things when when we have um auditions um ruben because i wasn't here i'm not sure whether you you said specifically what we ask for um from from applicants I didn't, no Okay, just to very briefly, just so that, but if you're, we obviously have the option of an online interview, and in that sense, you provide link to your video or yourself performing or improvising on your first study instrument of voice on a video sharing website such as YouTube, and you can make that unlisted so um, no one will be able to find that video. So, or if you come on campus, we might ask you to perform on your first study instrument of voice or share a recording of a song or piece you've written. If you're a producer, obviously you want to show us maybe something you've been working on on Logical Pro Tools, or you can show us the score of a notated composition or harmony exercise. So, you know, really to allow for that diversity that I mentioned, uh, whatever is your practice, just, you know, something that you feel like sharing with us so that we can get to know each other better. That would be fantastic. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. I see that we have a question in the chat um, from Gabriel, but just before um, I read that out, I was just gonna 
say that I didn't mention for dance, but it's very similar that if you aren't able to come to campus for the in-person audition, there is absolutely an opportunity for you to submit a, I'm going to use the word self-tape, like Rob said, um, where we give you instructions as to what to include, but we're looking at a short video recording of yourself dancing, um, and you can submit, submit that to us um, as a private link, and we can review that and give you an offer that way too. So it's not essential that you attend. Um, so I'm just going to read out a question. This is for music. Um, is there anything regarding soundtracks in any of the music courses? And also, is music theory something I should know well before entering the course? Great. That's a lovely, great question, Gabriel. And I love the fact you say soundtracks because that could be for different things, right? It could be for film. It could be for dance it could be for video games and these are all things that we do um, in all really in all the different pathways that I mentioned um, it's obviously a big aspect of a, in music you know being able to write for other um, media for other art forms so it's something that we definitely address whether you are a popular music a jazz student or a performance and composition or a producer so definitely that's on the uh, on on the learning here and with regards to music theory because of what i just said that you know you could come from very many different um sides to writing for media for to, to soundtracks you don't necessarily need to know music theory so you don't necessarily need to be able to produce a score also because um soundtrack writing these days is not just based on traditional media like writing a score giving it to an orchestra and recording that you could be a producer and maybe you can uh, use logical pro tools to write your soundtracks uh, and so music theory isn't essential. It's definitely something that is useful and we would want you to develop that, but then you'll have opportunities to do that within the degree. As Brandon said, you know, you could come at different points, but we'll definitely make sure that if music theory is something that you would like to explore, that you'd like to improve on, we will give you a chance to do that, but definitely not essential to do soundtracks. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Really good. Great, thank you so much. And please continue to use the Q&A. We'd really, really like to hear from you. We're literally here to answer any questions that you have, um, but we will continue chatting away um, in the meantime. But yeah, please do use the Q&A. Um, we can give this video a go. I know we had a bit of technical difficulties with the last one. Um, maybe we can interject if it's not working and we can share the link with you because this is also on YouTube. And we could talk a little bit about the benefit of being on campus if it doesn't work. Let's have a go. Let's give it a go. I do have it set up on YouTube to watch, if not, there we go.
I want to dance like that, April. I want to enroll on BA, on BA dance, please. Thank you. <laughs> Well, hopefully it ran relatively smoothly. It was a little bit um, jumpy in and out for me, but maybe we can share the YouTube links with you um, for the two films that um, from today. Um, so in, unless anybody's got any more questions, I thought maybe we could just end and everybody could feed in that's on the panel, but just something that we're really proud of and um, excited about at Middlesex is this fostering a sense of community and I think that's really come through from the conversations that have been had today this kind of shared ethos of coming together um, exploring things that we haven't uh, done before uh, finding kind of discovering our potential but also making lifelong friendships and by joining Middlesex University, you join a group of wonderful artists and practitioners. We had the courses here have been established for a really long time and they have an excellent reputation and all of the graduates are very successful. Um, and when you join us, your peers, your cohort, you are that next generation, you are the future workforce. And in all the programmes, as you've heard today, you're doing so many different things. You have writers and artists, designers, accompanists, uh, performers, people that are doing the things, supporting the things, crafting the thing. Um, and in that you're, you're making these connections and these relationships that can be really fruitful in terms of on graduation as well. Um, and we really support our students in finding further opportunities on graduation. We have an excellent um, employability team here. And I think all of the programmes either support a lot of different uh, placement opportunities or internships uh, through the relationships that we have with industry um, and London as well. So it's just something, something to flag. Um, the final slide that we had, I think it says something about the campus, but I think um, quite often there's a question mark for some people around a vocational option or a university. Um, and that's an important thing for you to work out what is best for you. There isn't really a right or wrong answer, but what we can say is if you do join a university, you are um, coming on to something I guess that has a sense of uh, infrastructure beyond just the discipline that you're studying on so we have an excellent well-being team here um, we have a fitness suite we have gyms and societies and social aspects that you can engage in as well um, we have a learning enhancement team where you'll get support for dyslexia and uh, writing you can have one-to-one -one support about how to write your essays and and really make that transition into higher education and there's a really wonderful infrastructure here beyond just the discipline that you're joining on um, in terms of the social aspects and also wider pastoral care uh, and study support as well. Um, and it's just something something to highlight too. Um, but I don't, I don't know if we have any last questions or if anybody wants to contribute any final thoughts, tutors or um, graduates or students. Um, any final <laughs> golden notes of wisdom um, before we end? I had a question that some people might want to ask but may not have asked it yet. Um, we know that the um, January 26th deadline is coming up um, next week, which is the equal consideration deadline for UCAS. Um, if people haven't yet made their application and they don't make it by the 26th, but they do then make it after, um, will they still be able to get a place? I'm not sure if you can answer directly or whether it's kind of on a case by case basis or um, just to give some people some reassurance because I know um, not everyone would have made their decision about whether they want to apply for university just yet. I mean, from, from our perspective, I know we're always open, open to that. Obviously there's the, the formal clearing exercise which happens um, um, I, I, I forgive me. I don't know from what date that usually opens. Um, from around the kind of end of June, start right. of July time. There yeah. you go. Yeah, but um, you know, we appreciate that. Um, yeah, the, the, the twenty sixth deadline is quite quite soon, and not everyone will make it. And um, as, as far as I, I I know, we're we're open to that. Um, yeah, I can't speak further. Courses. I think I would say. Um, same as Rob so we 
would understand that things have been very difficult and Middlesex has a very flexible and personal approach to uh, admissions and we're always looking at more than just the grades we're looking at you as kind of an entire uh, entity um, and that if you don't make the UCAS deadline for dance anyway and I think I think this is similar for music and theatre arts that's the audition, as we're calling it, <laughs> these events where you can be seen um, happen right the way until kind of the end of term. So for us, we're going until I think the end of March. Um, I would encourage you to get your application in as soon as you can do, but um, we are reviewing applications all the time. So we will still look at your UCAS form. And if we have dates, we will invite you still. Um, and as Rob said, if kind of you get towards late spring and, and that decision is still kind of not been made in terms of submitting your application, then there is clearing as well. But essentially the cycle, we are reviewing things all the time and the pandemic has caused a lot of disruption and it changes, I guess, that, that decision-making process isn't as smooth as it has been before. So uh, we're welcoming applications um, and we'll, we'll find a way to see you somehow. Yeah, absolutely. And that's absolutely the case for music as well. We're always reviewing applications. And of course, it'd be great to meet you on campus if you can come. But we also have um, online um, auditions and, and meetings. So um, don't be deterred by whatever problem there might be, uh, because we'll, we'll be open. We know the circumstances are challenging for everybody at the moment. So um yeah like april said we're very open and we definitely allow for students to meet us in in at different times in different ways so definitely have a go and you know just keep us posted you know if you have any doubts if you have any issues that may delay your application or there's something you're working on that you'd like to informally talk to us you know we're, we're here we'd love to hear from you and we'll we'll be glad to help you through the application process you know we don't help you just when you come as an undergraduate student we're very happy to support you um throughout the process of applying as well as we're doing now so please keep in touch because we always like to hear from you well i think that's Bang on my clock, it says bang on 5.30. <laughs> that was quite a beautiful way to end, perhaps. I um, don't know, Sophie, do we have any other questions or anything? No, I think that's it. Um, in regards to the videos, um, everyone will get some uh, post-event communications out via email, which will have a link to this recording. And then if you click on that link, that will take you to a YouTube page and I will pop the two videos that were played um, in this session in the description bar. Um, for you to be able to watch back at your own time. Great, thank you so much. And thank you so much, those of you that joined us and hopefully we'll have a chance to meet you somehow um, along the way. But as Frenzo said, do reach out to the admissions team or you can find information on the course tutors on the university website. And you can also find us on the social platforms as well, which are a really great way to see um, kind of that day in the life experience and get a sense of what's going on. Um, more kind of day to day so I'd really encourage you to do that as well and we wish you all the best of luck for any applications that you have coming up. Absolutely for anyone that is still deciding we do have an open uh, event on the 12th of February um, that you can book onto, to um, and that will give you a chance to see the campus and also meet with everyone that you've uh, spoken to today as well. Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to end the we've got some people saying thank you. Um, so oh, lovely. Thank you all for for coming along. Grazie, Gabriel. <laughs> Grazie a te. Lovely. Thank you, everyone. Wishing everyone a wonderful um, evening and take care. Thank you. Thank you all. And thank, thank you, you. All for all your work organizing this. Lovely to see you all. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.